I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's topic will be uh, something about lines in geometry. Well, let me start from uh, just uh, pointing to one of the previous lectures, uh, which contains notes with uh, 20 or 21 axioms. Um, um, German mathematician uh, Hilbert came up with to basically replace uh, Euclid's axioms. Um, Hilbert's axioms put geometry in a very, very solid, rigorous, logical foundation. And about lines, I would like to remind uh, three particular axioms uh, which are very important for just understanding uh, how the whole theory is built. Um, so, uh, here are just three different axioms about lines which uh, I, I would like to mention here. Number one is that if you have two points on the plane, there is a line, straight line, which contains them. Another thing is uh, that if you have two points of one line, coincide with two points of another line, I put them very, very close, but actually it's the same points. These points are the same and these points are the same. These two belong to a uh, top line, let's call it A, A1 and A2. And points B2, B1 and B2 belong to a line B. So if A1 coincides with B1 and A2 coincides with B2, then A and B coincide with each other. It's one and the same line. Uh, it's kind of obvious, but still, it's the axiom, and yes, obviously most axioms are quite obvious. Maybe except the, the fifth postulate of uh, Euclid about the parallel lines. But in any case, uh, so what it says that if you have two points, there is only one line uh, which can cross them. All right. So that's number two, and number three is that two different lines uh, can cross in no more than one point. Actually, they they, they can have no. Uh, crossing points if they are parallel, but at least no more than one. So these three statements about lines, which seem to be, to be obvious, uh, Hilbert had to actually put them as axioms if he wanted to build a, a logical and, uh, and rigorous geometrical theory. So just keep that in mind. Uh, primarily, uh, we will not actually be using explicitly these particular theory uh, accents, probably. Uh, but it, it, it's just very, it's, it's a very good practice to logically understand that something like this should be in the foundation of, uh, of geometry. Now, uh, continuing this topic, I would like to basically consider segments, which are parts of the straight lines in between two different points. By the way, I'm using certain words like in between, which again need to be clarified in one way or another. Uh, and again, I should refer you to Hilbert's axioms, uh, where he quite extensively actually elaborates about what it means in between, etc. We understand it on a common sense level, uh, which is sufficient for this particular thing. So, speaking about segments, um, segments actually do have uh, certain properties, and uh, you can operate, you can do something with these segments. Now, one of the obvious things which um, you can do is to state that two different segments are congruent, like this one and this one. Intuitively, we are talking about the lengths of the segments, but I will address it a little later. In theory, congruent means you can just have uh, one segment and using certain um, non-deforming transformations like shift this end to this 
point to this end, and then turning, now this will be something like this, and then turning, rotating the segment counterclockwise until this point will coincide with this. That's what basically congruent means. All right, so we understand what congruency among the, um, the segments actually is. It's the existence of the process of non-deforming transformation which will make them coincide when left hand will uh, uh, left hand of one uh, segment uh, coincides with left uh, uh, end of another segment and the right with the right. All right. Is that the only thing we, should, we, we can do? Just transforming one segment into another and then see whether they are um, uh, congruent or not? Um, no, there are certain operations which you can do with segments, actual arithmetic operations. Uh, just as an example, let's talk about addition. Can I add two different segments? Well, obviously, again, intuitively you understand. You just take one segment attach to it another segment, and you get something which can be called a sum of these two segments. All right, let's try to define it more rigorously. So if I have two segments, segments AD and another segment CD, what does it mean to add these segments? Now, by the way, I put them like um, they are located on the same straight line, that's absolutely irrelevant. I can put CD somewhere here. It doesn't really matter because whatever I do has absolutely nothing to do with their location. It has something to do with their length, actually. All right, so what does it mean to add these two segments? Well, quite simply, it means that I have to find another segment, call it EF, and a point in between, call it G, in such a way that AB would be uh, congruent to EG, this one to this one, and CG would be congruent to GF, this to this. So that's what, that's what it means to add these two segments. Well, I can define anything I want. The question is, does it make any sense? Can I really construct the sum of two segments? Well, apparently, yes, we can. You remember that all the constructions in uh, geometry traditionally are made with two different instruments, straight, line, uh, straight ruler and, uh, and the compass. So, Using these two instruments, I can construct this particular sum of these two segments using a very simple technique. Step number one, I draw a line using the straight line ruler. Number two, I pick the point, which is E. Number three, I take the compass and put one leg in A and another in B. And then the one which used to be in A, I put in, in E. And what used to be the span of the compass, I will just mark the point called G. Then I repeat the same uh, procedure with the, uh, the segment CD. I change the compass uh, from C to G. And using this span, I uh, put my leg into G. And another leg of the compass will mark the F. Now, obviously, this procedure of taking the compass to a certain, uh, to set it to, to, to the length of a certain segment and mark it somewhere else on the line uh, marks the new segment, which is congruent to the original one. Same thing here. So we have built the segment EF and the point in between G with EG congruent to AB and GF congruent to CD. So we have constructed our sum, and um, uh, basically that's the proof of the fact that sum does make sense, that our operation of 
which is defined like we have to find a, a, a new segment and the point with this property of being uh, uh, congruent, that this definition does make sense. This segment does exist because we physically constructed this segment. Okay, now we have constructed the sum of two segments. What it means, we can actually uh, construct the sum of n segments where n can be any integer number. Um, now, constructing the sum of n segments of the same um, uh, of the same seg constructing a sum of n same segments, which means AB will be summed with AB, with AB, with AB n times. Basically, that's what people call multiplication. <laughs> so, what we can do is, not only we can do AB plus CG equals this particular segment, we can also construct AB times n. And how can we construct it? Well, very simply. If n, for instance, is equal to 2, for simplicity, we take compass from a, B to a, from a to B, mark it here, then from, again, the same, the same span of the same compass, we mark the second, the second point, which is equal to a, B. And that would be E, G, F where EG is equal to AB and GF is equal to AB. So we basically multiplied our in initial segment AB by 2. We add it to itself twice. And we can add any integer number of times. So we can add um, segments and we can multiply them by integer number. OK, let's do some reverse operations, subtraction and division. How to do that? Well, it's quite elementary. Let's do subtraction first. How can we subtract from AB, CD? Well, we start with basically having a compass spanning the AB and marking it here. Then, we have this, uh, the compass set to CD, and then instead of going outside of this uh, the segment EF, we go inside. So we go this way. This will be G. So EF is congruent to AD, and GF is congruent to uh, CD. Then this segment, EG, will be a difference between AB and CD. Why? Well, do you remember how to check that the difference between, let's say, 5 and 3 is equal to 2? What does it mean? Well, it means that if you will take the result of this subtraction 2 and add to the number which you subtract, you have to have 5, the original number from which you started. This is a definition of subtraction. Now, does it actually hold in case of our uh, segments arithmetic? Well, let's try. If we will add EG to GF, according to our rules of addition, which we have already discussed, we obviously have a segment EF which is congruent to AB. So that's what actually is a proof that our subtraction does make sense. If I take the difference, EG, add whatever I subtracted, I have original AB from which I started. Right, so this is basically the explanation of what the difference between two different segments uh, is. Uh, by the way, I have to note that inability to subtract from a smaller number, the bigger one, like from 3 to subtract 5, 
this inability led mathematicians to invent negative numbers, minus two, for instance, in this case. Well, in this case, negative segments uh, were not actually invented because they don't have any practical um, application. So we are saying that this subtraction works only if we are subtracting from a bigger segment, we subtract the smaller one. Which, which does make sense from some practical standpoint. We don't have any kind of negative segments, but ne segments with a negative length, so to speak. All right, so we know addition, we know subtraction, we know multiplication. Well, division is obvious. Uh, I'll have it very, very briefly mentioned here. Now, again, let's consider what division actually is. What does it mean that 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3? What does it mean? It means that the multiplication of the result of the division by uh, divisor gives the original number from which we started from. So division is validated by multiplication. Same thing with segments. Since we know what multiplication actually is, if you want to divide by, well, let's say 2 in this particular case, what does it mean? Well, it means that the segment CD multiplied by 2 would be equal to AB. So if I have C, D, E. So if I have a segment C, E, which originally is congruent to A, B, and I can find a point D, which actually gives me uh, two equal segments, um, not equal actually, congruent, uh, C, D, and D, E congruent to each other. Then, of course, as you understand, CG multiplied by 2, which means added to itself twice, will give me the original segment um, AB. So that's what actually means to divide a segment by any natural number n. If you want to divide it by, let's say, n, It means that the result of the division multiplied by n should be, should gives us the original, which means that this point D should be somewhere here, where n is the number of these uh, little segments, which added up. Uh, result in AB, in the original uh, segment AB. So basically we have to know how to divide a segment into n pieces, each one having the length of one nth of the original piece. And by the way, it's a very interesting uh, problem and we will address it. How to add is simply, how to divide is not. So I'm not going right now into construction of the division. Right now I'm just talking about the existence of this point D which will produce the segment CD multiplied by N giving uh, the original segment AB. So it's existence but not the construction. Construction will follow. All right, so we have segments and we have segments arithmetic. Okay, now we know how to multiply uh, a segment by an integer and how to divide it by integer, which means we can very easily introduce multiplication of a segment by any rational number m over n, where m and n are, uh, are, are natural numbers. Obviously, it means that by definition, I'm not really trying to prove anything, it's the definition. It means that you will multiply AB by M first, having 
uh, some A, B, uh, M, M times, and then the resulting segment you divide into N equal pieces, as we know how to do it actually, and uh, that what produces this result of this multiplication. Um, I, I'm not saying it's completely rigorous. It's probably rigorous enough for certain level which I'm trying to address, because in theory, whenever I define something like multiplication of a segment by rational number, um, I have to address two very important issues. Well, existence of the result of this multiplication and its uniqueness, because you don't want two different people using two different ways to come up with uh, multiplication to come up with different answers. So existence and uniqueness of the result of this operation are supposed to be addressed very, very uh, rigorously and, and, and logically. I'm not doing this right now because the level which I am trying to address actually suffices. But uh, in theory, you have to understand it's really something which we, which we might address maybe in the future. All right, so we know how to multiply by any rational number. Uh, well, from this, it's uh, really one little step to uh, multiply by any real number, which includes rational and irrational number. And uh, you can consider any irrational number as uh, some kind of a limit of rational numbers, uh, which are approximating this. For instance, irrational um, the square root of 2 is uh, approximated, for instance, to two decimal points with, with 1.41. With 3, it's 1.414. I'm not sure I'm right, by the way. But in any case, you can always approximate with certain number of decimal digits. And each time, this is a rational number written in a decimal uh, system. But it doesn't really matter what's the system of writing in this case. So you can always multiply any uh, segment by any approximate value, and then the result will actually go to a certain limit. And that limit is called the multiplication of AB by square root of 2. Uh, again, it's definitely requiring certain knowledge of how irrational numbers are defined. Uh, as limit of rational uh, sequence of numbers, it's not an easy um, it's not an easy topic, and uh, I don't want to address it right now. I just want you to understand that we can definitely use something like this approximation to make this calculation as precise as possible, and whatever the result of the uh, whatever the limit of uh, different um, results of the multiplication of AB by certain uh, more and more precise approximation, that limit will be this particular uh, result of this particular multiplication. All right, so we can do that. Uh, and now let's think about measuring. How do we measure uh, segments? Well, um, basically, we can do it if we know that segments can have this type of arithmetic. Now, how? Very simple. You take one particular segment as a unit. Doesn't matter. This is a unit. Let's call it x, y. Now, if you would like to measure uh, any particular uh, any particular segment in these units, you have to basically find out what is what is this multiplier. Or, if you wish, you have to be able to find the divisor, which will give you x, y. That's the same thing. So either you divide a, b, by r and you get x, y, or you multiply x, y by r to get a, b. If you find this particular r, then this r is a measure or length, basically, expressed in these units, in units of x, y. Now, 
again, there are very important logical steps which must be uh, must be went through if we want to do it really rigorously, really logically correct. We have to um, prove existence of this number and its uniqueness. And again, it actually follows from the definition of uh, finding, uh, for instance, among rational numbers, finding m over n, uh, which which will give this particular which will give particular equality. Um, now, in case of irrational numbers, again, we have to consider the limit of uh, of certain approximations of the uh, of the irrational number. And without going into all the details, I can just say that existence and uniqueness are important uh, and they can be proven, which means that the lengths of a segment expressed in the units of or any units, basically, in this case, uh, does make sense as a, as, as a mathematical definition. However, as everything which is related to some fundamentals, it's always very difficult to prove uh, because, um, you see, if you are trying to prove something which is much more advanced, you have all the baggage which preceded this, which has already been proven. If you are going into some very, very fundamental things, like length of the segment, you don't have much except the axioms of Hilbert, basically, uh, to manipulate with. And that's why it makes it a little bit more difficult. However, proper knowledge of Hilbert's uh, axioms would suffice to logically, step by step, prove existence and uniqueness of uh, this uh, multiplier R, which makes the concept of length really making sense. Uh, and now, the very last basically topic I would like to address, what are these units of measurements? Well, everybody knows that there are many different units of measurements. Different people at different times invented different units of measurements, from foot to meter to uh, astronomical units, whatever it is. So basically, it doesn't really matter what kind of unit you are choosing. Uh, I mean, it probably is important for you know, for physicists or somebody else because they have to deal with real, real world and real objects. We are dealing in abstract math, which means we can say that any segment can be chosen as a unit, and then based on this particular segment, we can measure any other segment in these units and compare the lengths. Basically, comparing the lengths means just comparing this number. So if one particular segment if one particular segment so this is our unit xy so if ab is xy times uh, r and then you have another segment cd which is which has the length S. So this one has a length R, and CD has the length S in terms of units X, Y. Well, then you can do anything you want with um, the segments, and the lengths will actually follow the segments. For instance, if you add two segments together, well, obviously you understand that using the construction of addition which I have offered, their lengths will also uh, be added together as two different numbers. And what it actually corresponds from here is that it's supposed to be r plus s. The lengths should be sum of two lengths. But on the other side, if you just follow uh, the purely syntactical um, uh, expressions which I have here. I mean, you can always add these two together and you will have AB plus CD equals to XY R plus XY S. Right? So these left parts of these two equations are the same, which means that this is the same. Which means, as you see, we have a distributive 
law um, which multiplication by some number, uh, multiplication of a segment by a certain number really obeys. So x, y times r plus s is equal to x, y, r plus x, y, s. This is a, a pure distributive law of multiplication relative to addition. Well, it works with the segments as well. So that's quite interesting, and uh, obviously you understand that not only addition works, but um, the, uh, the, uh, the subtraction works as well, and uh, even the multiplication and division works. I mean, without much of a uh, efforts, we can derive something like if you have uh, x, y times r, and then you get some segment, and then you multiply it by s, it would be the same thing as x, y multiplied by r times s, which is associative, basically. Now, what's important here to understand that x, y is not a number. This is a segment. So this is an operation between segment and the number. This is an operation between a bigger segment and a number. In this case, it's an operation between segment and this number, but this particular sign is a multiplication between two different numbers. So you see how interrelated operations on numbers, which represent the lengths of the segments, is with operations or on segment and numbers. So I should actually differentiate this operation, which is, let me put it in a circle, which is a multiplication of a segment by a number. And this is as well. But this is actually a true multiplication in original sense, multiplication of two numbers. I'll just use the dot to differentiate them. So this associative law kind of works except that in some cases it's a multiplication of number and segment, and in other, number and number. All right, so basically that concludes my little exercise about segments and their lengths and their measurements and arithmetic operations uh, on segments. Um, uh, I would also like to point out to website, unizor.com, where um, not only you can uh, study this material, uh, there are some notes over there, and what's important is that parents or supervisors can actually use this website to, uh, to control the educational process of uh, students which, which they supervise uh, with corresponding exams, tests, scores, etc., etc. Thank you very much.